Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to week five of the physical activity, physiotherapy exercise and physical activity course. Um, I'm here today with Dr. Fiona Moffat, who's been working on week five with us. Hi, Fiona. Hi there. Fiona and I have just come back from our day of physical activity, so we may be looking slightly <laughs> hot and sweaty, but we're here to talk to you anyway. Um, we've been practicing what we preach. Um, so... What we'd like to do is just introduce week five to everyone. Um, in week five, we'll be covering, um, we've, so we've looked at all the clinical conditions and physical activity, how it affects those clinical conditions in weeks three and four. And in week five, we'll be moving on to how we might integrate physical activity into our sort of clinical practice with our patients and with the individuals that we work with. So we'll be looking at prescribing physical activity and barriers to physical activity and motivational interviewing and motivating our patients as well. So Fiona, have you got any, um, you've been working on this week, so have you got any comments or any sort of little bits of advice for the participants of the course as they work through this week? Yeah, I think um, I think if you look at the MOOC overall, this is uh, this is a point where we're kind of building up to where we actually start to, as you say, put into practice how we really make an impact on our, uh, you know, on our patients, on our individuals, uh, physical activity levels and, and how that builds at, you know, sort of a community level as well. Um, and I think it's it's all very good. You know, we, we've got the message now about physical inactivity and the, you know, the, the really consequential sequelae of a, of a physical physically inactive lifestyle but it's not just as simple as saying well you need to do more um, we have to sell it to our patients we have to brand it and market it to them in a meaningful way and we have to provide them with a physical activity program that is achievable and um, that is enjoyable that has uh, goals that they can, you know, short-term goals that they can achieve so that they can see the benefits and they can see the values. So, you know, this week five and, you know, the, the content of week five is so important um, because this is where we stop talking the talk and start walking the walk, really, I think. And so have you got any examples of how, of the work that you've been done maybe that you could share with um, the participants, just to give them an example of how they might integrate these sorts of ideas into clinical practice? Yeah, I, I suppose there's a, a couple of examples I've drawn from my own practice. So one of, um, one of the areas that I'm particularly interested in is um, increasing activity and, and physical activity and, and exercise within um, adults who are you know quite critically ill um, and trying to convince those individuals and their family and the healthcare professionals looking after them that we can safely prescribe exercise can be quite a challenge um, and so there's a lot of education and a lot of motivation that goes into that and one of the key areas there I think is about goal setting and setting very small goals that means that um, the, the patients can very quickly achieve them um, and so they don't become disillusioned um, and everybody else is motivated by the fact that patients are achieving goals they can see um, you know those benefits and you know that the, the family love it the other case that I think um, sort of pops into my head is somebody that I've been working with recently to create some um, educational material for our students at Nottingham and she's a lady who has suffered with mental health problems all her life. Um, from, you know, right from childhood, they really came to a peak um, when she was diagnosed with uh, postnatal psychosis. Um, and she's been under mental health services, you know, for, for as long as she can remember. And in the last three or four years, she decided that she was getting older, she was putting on a little bit of weight and she wanted to lose, uh, lose a, little, uh, a little weight and she would do that through, through increasing her exercise. And she was telling me how um, she was given an, an exercise prescription where she was expected um, just to go to, to uh, her local gym and she was so intimidated by the thought of going to a gym she said I thought it'll just be full of young people 
I won't fit in. Uh, of course, she went along and the people there weren't too helpful. They prescribed her exercises that she struggled with and therefore she didn't really want to do. And so, of course, after a couple of weeks, she fell off the wagon and she decided that exercise wasn't for her. Fortunately, however, she was doing some work for the university and by virtue of that, she um, she got a membership at, a, at the, the university gym and she decided that she would give it one last go. And she went there and she said that the team there were fantastic. They listened to what motivated her. They listened to what goals she wanted to achieve. And they talked to her about how realistically she could manage those over a period of time. They um, instructed her carefully. They followed her up. They adapted her exercises when she couldn't do them. And she, they progressed them when she, she was achieving them. And she said that it became almost a social part of her life as well. And I think those two gym experiences, or those two exercises experiences, perfectly exemplify what we need to be achieving in our clinical exercise prescription. Because the first one, well, she gave up. The second one, she said to me, within two weeks, I saw a difference. And I said to her, what, what was that difference? What, did, what was it that you noticed? And she said, for the first time in a long time, I felt happy. And I just thought that was incredible because, you, you know, she, she has had these mental health problems for so long. And since she started exercising, she has not seen her GP once, um, where she was a, you know, a regular attender. So I think that's a, a nice case study. It's, you know, really to sum up, they, they understood her. They really got to know her as a person what her, her goals and her objectives were, and they set her something that was achievable and enjoyable. I think that that's such a great case study. That's such a great story to listen to. And I hope that um, people this week on the course will bear that in mind as you go through the activities, the topics this week, and how you can integrate those into your clinical practice. And bear in mind this story from Fiona, um, the experience that she's had with this patient. I think that makes it, that's a really nice story to think about. Um, yeah, so there's there's a quite a bit to get through this week, and we just for Fiona, I didn't really introduce you properly or ask you to introduce yourself, but Fiona's <laughs> a physiotherapist and a lecturer at the University of Nottingham, and we're delighted to have you um, facilitating on this course. So we've seen you in the forums already, um, and uh, I'm uh, we'll see you again in there over the next couple of weeks. So thank you so Absolutely. much for sharing no your knowledge, problem. sharing your knowledge thank with you. us. Um, Delighted to have you on the course. That's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs>